nice of you to drop in. Hello people, I'm the Comic Book Gamer, and seeing as the Dark Knight 3 The Master Race is coming out soon, I figured it was time for me to make a video about Frank Miller's universe in DC Comics, because he has his own separate Earth. Uh, the reason he has that is because uh, DC realizes that Frank Miller's completely crazy nuts, so they're like, hey, we don't want his stuff to be canon, let's throw it all in the same universe. That universe is called Earth 31, because all Frank Miller's books for DC, like Batman, all those take place in the same universe. So so yeah, I'm going to be giving you guys a timeline trying to help you catch up prior to uh, The Dark Knight 3 coming out because you're probably going to be hearing a lot about it when it does come out because it's a huge new release. Frank Miller's coming back to do another sequel to The Dark Knight Returns, as well a threequel or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of, you guys are probably going to be hearing a lot about it. So here's to help you guys catch up so you're not completely confused. The first book in the series is Batman Year One. This is by far my favorite. It's an excellent book. It's great. It's not that big, which I think is another thing that adds to it because of the fact that when Frank Miller has to write a longer book, he adds so much crap to it that just drowns it down. Like, The Dark Knight Returns should have been much shorter than it was, but he added so much crap that made it a lot longer. This is just, he. I think he wrote it, trimmed the fat, and made a great book book. Um, it's not so much as a Batman origin story, which of course it is, and a Jim Gordon uh, story, as it is a like world building story. It tells you a lot about Gotham. It's not just like, oh, here's some crazy people that live here in Gotham, like, you know, Joker or Penguin or someone or Two-Face. Like, it's not just like, okay, here are all these eccentric villains. It's here are just the people of Gotham. Here's Gotham uh, itself. Here's how Gotham is. And I love seeing that. And then we got to see these interesting characters interact with that world, such as Batman. Batman, Catwoman, and Jim Gordon. I thought that was great. The art is fantastic. It is, thank God, it is not done by Frank Miller. It's done by David Mazzuchelli. I don't know if I pronounced his last name right, but anyways, he nailed it with the art. It's perfect for this type of story. I love it, and everything is just great about it. It's about mobsters. It's about Gotham. It's about Batman. It's fantastic, and it's my favorite uh, Frank Miller work as far as Batman goes. Next up is All-Star Batman and Robin. This book is just absolutely atrocious. It's terrible. The art is fantastic because, again, thank God it is not done by Frank Miller, but it is done by Jim Lee, one of my favorite artists of all time. He just does an amazing job on this. He always does. And Jim Lee, to me, more than any other great artist, gets stuck with such crappy writers all the time. Or not just crappy writers, but like sometimes good writers that just do crappy with their, when they're with Jim Lee. I don't know why, but it seems to be a thing. Like, you'll pick up a Jim Lee book and you'll be like, well, the art's great, and then the, the writing's just not, and that's definitely the case with this. Uh, the art's fantastic, the writing is terrible. Uh, Dick Grayson is just, like, he's one of my favorite characters of all time in all of comics, and in this, it's terrible how he's treated, his parents are killed, Batman grabs him like he's a kitten by the scruff of the neck. Like, the way he grabs him it, when he first meets him is terrible. And then Batman goes around laughing psychotically and punching cops in the face. And he's, like, he's cussing at Robin. And he said, this is a kid who, in the main continuity, Batman had sympathy for because he knows what Robin's been through. He's like, you know, I was in that same exact position. I was around your age when my parents were killed. He had sympathy for him. And this, he doesn't at all. Like, he's terrible to him. Then he leaves him in the Batcave. And he, uh, Robin has to eat rats to survive. Alfred brings him some food. And he gets mad at Alfred for bringing him food, for bringing Robin food. And it's like, what is going on here? Here. And then you have the stuff of, like, uh, when the Justice League shows up, which makes no sense again. Like, <laughs> Wonder Woman, I, I died laughing when I read this part. Wonder Woman calls a guy a walking sperm bank. Yeah, well, not a walking sperm bank, but she just, she when she goes by a guy, she says, out of my way, sperm bank. <laughs> it's just so bad, but it's so bad it's good. Like, this book I can laugh at. It's my second favorite out of all the Frank Miller Batman books because if you can read it with, like, a comedic tone to it, it's great. Just satire because it's so bad that it's good. 
If you know what I mean. It's like watching Attack of the Clones and making fun of it. That's what this is. The Justice League have a meetup, and they're, like, all arguing, and Wonder Woman is, like, arguing with them a lot because, you know, she hates men and all that. <laughs> at least Frank Miller's Wonder Woman does. And then her and Superman just kiss at the end of the meeting. It's like, okay. And then we learn that Batman just absolutely hates Green Lantern because in the end, uh, Green Lantern's like, he wants, to t he wants to make friends with Batman. And he's like, okay, you know, we should... We want you to join the, um... We want you to join the Justice League. Also, but prior to that all happening, like, one of the only decent parts of the book, like, legitimately, it's out of left field, too. You just see Joker, like, seduce this woman and then kill her, which I thought was, like, sort of good-ish because it's, like, it's showing how ruthless Joker is, and then it's just back to normal Gotham. And I was like, that's kind of weird. But, like, it was the best part of the book. It wasn't fantastic. But, uh... <laughs> Batman talks about how much he hates Green Lantern later on in the end when they meet. He calls, uh, I'm assuming he's still referring to Green Lantern here, because it's right before he meets up with Green Lantern. He says, I've got a retarded demigod to deal with. That's how he refers to Green Lantern. He might be talking about Superman, but he doesn't, like, interact with Superman throughout the book, so I'm assuming he means Green Lantern. But anyways, uh, the dialogue is just fantastic. It's classic Frank Miller di dialogue. Green Lantern and, uh... Batman meet real quick, and Batman's like, we're gonna meet here later on in the night at this time or whatever, and so when they depart, Batman says, moron, <laughs> and Green Lantern says, what a creep, I don't like this guy at all, that's, that's literally word for word what Green Lantern says in this book, showing you how great Frank Miller's dialogue is, it's, dear god, it's been a while since I've read this book, I'm just flipping through the pages right now, it's terrible, but anyways, in the end, Green Lantern meets him at this place, and it's a place that is completely painted yellow, you guys might be able to hear me turning the pages, I don't know, sorry if that picks up on the mic, anyways, um, it's a place that is completely painted yellow, with lemonade and everything, and during that, uh, Green Lantern's talking about how, like, dense Batman is, how much he's, like, he does not like Batman, so he punches Batman, and, uh, then Robin goes and attacks Hal Jordan. Jordan. And what happens is Robin ends up almost killing Hal Jordan because he crushes this glass, you know, a glass for drinking lemonade against his throat and it almost kills him. And during that, Robin gets punched in the face by Batman. Like, Batman straight up punches him in the face because he's like, oh, you're not supposed to kill him, even though he's like fine with him attacking him. He punches, he takes him, throws him into the wall, and then punches him in the face. This is terrible. I, like, these are two characters that I absolutely, well, three characters, because including Hal Jordan and everything, but just talking about the relationship of Batman and Robin, I love these two characters. Frank Miller just took them and destroyed them. What, this relationship is just god-awful. But anyways, on to the next one, and uh, to me, the most overrated comic book of all time, The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, when I reviewed it, I gave it a 6 out of 10. That's because I was trying to think objectively. If I were actually to review it myself, like as in just full-on opinionated, I'd have to give it probably like a 4 and a half. Because, first off, the art's terrible. A lot of people like it. They like the style. I think it's absolutely terrible. Frank Miller does a terrible job with the art, in my opinion. And uh, the writing is lazy and choppy. It's not really very coherent. For instance, all the news panels sometimes make up for good things. A lot of times, it's just useless exposition, and it's there to fill the book to make it look bigger. It's it's an, a perfect example of how lazy Frank Miller is. And then there are some good elements to it, such as I really enjoy Joker and seeing how when Batman quit, Joker just completely quit. Also, this book is brought down even more by All-Star Batman and Robin because you know what happened prior to this. You know that Batman... Batman is not a good guy at all. It's a good thing he retired. He was a terrible person. He enjoyed, even though they were dirty cops, he enjoyed beating on their faces. That's not a hero I want out there. And uh, the way he portrays Superman is obviously terrible. I'm not going to talk about this one too much because of the fact that I spent a lot of time talking about the others and a lot of people know about Dark Knight Returns. And yeah, I just, I didn't care for it too much. The only really good parts to me was the part uh, where he fights the mutant leader. I enjoyed that. Again, the art was terrible, but besides that, I enjoyed the fight. Uh, Joker was pretty cool, except for the end to where Joker's like, you know, uh, I'm going to kill myself and they'll all blame you. It's like... Who cares? Who really cares? I don't care. The police already have their own agenda against Batman. Him killing Joker is not going to change anything about that. But he's like, oh, they're going to hunt you down now. It's like, 
No, they already are. This is not going to change a thing. Joker, what you are doing is literally useless and retarded. It's like, that's not the mastermind Joker I know. This Joker's an idiot. And then the final uh, battle between Batman and Superman is just stupid. It's That's how to explain it in one word. Stupid. Uh, and anyways, that's Dark Knight Returns. Next is on to The Dark Knight Strikes Again. I don't want to spend too much talking about this book either because it is by far the worst out of all of them. The art is done by uh, Frank Miller's now ex-wife, Lynn Vartley, and uh, she does a terrible job. She's even worse than her uh, ex-husband, Frank Miller. Like, it's surprising. Frank Miller married someone who was a worse artist than him. I don't know how, but he did it. Anyways, the art is just terrible. You will spend time looking at the pages wondering what is going on. It's so confusing like that. This book is just weird. Like, Batman is back because at the end of Dark Knight Returns, he faked his death, but he's back again, and now he's bald, and all the superheroes are, like, working for Lex Luthor, and so now he has to... Oh, my gosh. Now he has to go and stop Lex Luthor because Lex Luthor's got the spot. Lex Luthor looks like Kingpin as well and is just an idiot. Um, one of the things that really sums this up well, because I have not read this book in a while. I read it once a while ago, hated it, have not touched it since. So I went to uh, some Amazon reviews to see uh, you know, what the story was about again to refresh my memory, and the end of this review just perfectly describes The Dark Knight Strikes Again. <laughs> At the end, he says, Confession to all Batman fans reading. I spent good money on this book. In doing so, I willfully subsidized the continued employment of Frank Miller in his current state. For this, I am very sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> I forgive this guy. I've done the same thing. I own three out of the four books I talked about today, and I can explain why. First off, year one's amazing, so of course I own it. Uh, All-Star Batman and Robin, I got one day because of the fact that uh, I had Christmas money, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get a new comic, and I was like, oh, New Origin of Robin, yeah, I'm gonna get it. I didn't even see it was written by Frank Miller. I just saw Jim Lee's art, and that is New Origin of Robin. I was stoked. Reddit sucked. Dark Knight Returns, uh, it came with like a 75th anniversary Batman thing that came with Court of Owls and Hush, so of course I got it, and that was just a book that came with it. Anyways, uh, this book is absolutely atrocious. The art is just all around horrific. The writing is just as bad, if not worse. Dick Grayson, what he's turned into, and it makes sense after All-Star Batman and Robin what Dick Grayson's turned into, because in this, Dick Grayson is the new Joker, and he's not just a Joker, he is a superpower Joker. He's been enhanced in a way to where he cannot die. For instance, his head gets chopped off, and then he takes it and puts it back on his body. Yes, you, you're not mishearing me. <laughs> Robin's head, well, Robin, Dick Grayson, as Joker, gets his head chopped off, and he takes his head and puts it back on his body. <laughs> and that's just... Oh, it's like, That's probably one of the high points of this book, to be honest. They're, it's just so bad. Because what's going on is, during all this thing that's going on with Lex Luthor and the superheroes, there's this new Joker who's been killing a lot of superheroes. And so Batman goes to figure it out, and he finally figures out that Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson confesses his love for Batman. Yes, he confesses that he's been in love with him, so Batman taunts him and makes fun of him and all this other stuff, and Dick Grayson's just talking about how, like, he wants to kill Carrie Kelly because, you know, he's she's the new Robin, and, like, he loves her more than Dick Grayson and all this stuff, and he forgot about Dick, and it's just like, dear God, why? Why would you do that? He made all those jokes that everyone made about Batman and Robin back in the day around when Robin first came out. He made those a reality. That's what he did. He t he's like, you know what? What if we took like, what if we took all those jokes that people made about you know Batman and Robin, uh, you know, secretly actually being together? What if we took that and made a story arc about Robin being su secretly in love with uh, with Batman, and then add a lot of Frank Millerness to it, such as Robin being a psychopath that kills superheroes and is the new Joker. It's just, oh, it's terrible. It's it's hard seeing this with all these characters like Frank Miller took so many characters I love, such as Superman, and just turned them, warped them into these terrible characters. Superman is not, did not get half as bad the treatment that, um, R Dick Grayson did, though. You can tell, Frank Miller hates Hal Jordan, he hates Superman, he hates Dick Grayson. Like, in Wonder Woman, I don't know if he hates her or if that's just the way he views her. 
if you know what I mean by what I'm saying there. I don't know if he hates Wonder Woman. I just think that's the way he views her. I think he views her as some Amazon that hates uh, men. I think that's the way he views her. I don't think he hates her. I think that's the way he views her. That's the way he views her. Frank Miller is a crazy psychopath. When people asked him, it was a Playboy interview, Playboy asked him, you know, who is he like, better, Batman or Superman? We all know the answer, it's Batman. But um, he just said they're just, like, lines on a piece of paper to him. You never want to hear a comic book writer say that. Like, even, I'm a huge Superman fan, if my favorite writer for Superman were to say Batman, I'd be more happy than them saying, oh, it's just a lines on a piece of paper. Because, like, you want them to have an interest in these characters, not to just think they're dull lines on a piece of paper. Uh, anyways, I hope that helps you understand these books a little more. They're all just complete crazy nuts, so Batman Year One's the only good one out of the bunch, in my opinion. A lot of people absolutely love Dark Knight Returns. I honestly have no idea why. Maybe it's because it was so different from the time, but now, since we have so many Batman, dark Batman stories, this one is just pales in comparison to every single one, in my opinion. Again, this is all my opinion. If you like these books, good for you. This is just my opinion. Uh, I hope, again, I hope this helped you guys understand a bit more because, trust me, when Dark Knight, uh, retur the Dark Knight 3 comes out, I'll probably most of the comic book channels you are subscribed to will be covering it. I probably will not because I don't plan on buying this unless I hear it's like amazing I might get it afterwards or if I hear it's terrible and it's funny sort of like uh, All-Star Batman and Robin how that was so terrible it was funny then I might uh, read it just for a good laugh or something but uh, not when it first comes out I highly doubt I'll be reading it unless it's like I may buy the first issue and then that'll be it. Who knows we'll see what happens when it comes out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a like.